Is your photo manipulation work way too sharp and photographic? I have the same problem. My mission this year is to learn digital overpainting and in this video I'll show you how I created this oil style overpaint in Photoshop. Okay, so here we go. This is a bit of an experimental one guys. Even though I am a YouTube Photoshop guy, I do not have all the answers. I'm a student of the game just like you. So when I want to learn how to do new things, I often look up video tutorials, see how other people are doing things, piece the elements that I find together, and then try and add my own spin. So getting into this piece, the first thing you would have seen there is the mood board. And I use mood boards all the time in my professional work, in my personal work. And there's some important, I've created a dedicated tutorial so if you'd like to learn how to create those mood boards we've got that tutorial in the description below so as i said in the intro the problem with my work is because i'm, I'm a photo realism artist a lot of the stuff that i do is uncomfortably sharp really um photographic looking and i want to take things to the next level and create more fine art influenced uh, composites so before i was a digital artist before i was a photoshop artist i was actually an illustrator but because photoshop worked out so well for me i kind of dropped the pen and paper and became exclusively digital but i want to get back to my roots so this video series that you're watching now is the process of me learning how to do digital overpaint to change the look of my artwork so it's for this first video it's an oil look that we're going for um, the video tutorials that are watched were one by Pix Imperfect and one by the Photoshop training channel the brushes that are used for this I'm going to link below and I'll also link to the guys videos as well so you can watch them um, at the source so the demo tutorials that I watched on both those channels, they were quite good, but I felt I could do the oil overpaint a bit better than the demo images. So it was really helpful looking at their tutorials, but I, I wanted to take things a step further. So let's get into what's being done here. A new layer is above the source image. I have the mixer brush tool active. Um, at the top, if you want to copy the settings here, you can hit pause and just see what's going on there. But the icon that says load brush, that's turned off. The preset that I used is one of the uh, brushes and it's an uh, oil paint brush, a rough oil paint brush. I'll give the exact brush and the download and the download link in the description below. So there's two base layers that I'm working from there. You have the background copy and you have the background. One of them is at about 60 or 50% opacity and the other one is at 100%. So as I'm going through the process of laying down the mixer brush on the new layer above, I'm hiding and showing those layers at the two different opacities just to get a feel. For what's going on now one of the main things when you're doing this using the mixer brush tool is to sample all layers so at the top there on the brush settings you can see sample all layers i also had uh, pen pressure controls brush size i don't know if that's the right thing to do or not but that's what i put in place and it seems to be working quite well for me now i have a cintiq I've actually only just started using it. This is one of the first major projects that I've done with a Cintiq. So I'm learning the ropes here. I'm, I'm by no means an expert. This is completely new territory for me. Um, one of the things that I did do that some of the other guys on the PM team don't is I programmed the uh, Cintiq hotkeys on the left to have common um, shortcuts that I use in this kind of work. So. I had one that was set up to switch black and white um, on the colors. I had one that was B for brush. I had the square brackets for making the brush size bigger and smaller. 
um, and I had zoom in, zoom out, and on the pen itself, one of the buttons was uh, pan, so that would be spacebar, and one of the buttons is right click for changing the brush. I don't know if that's the most optimal way to do it or not. Like I said to you guys at the beginning, I'm learning and basically figuring it out as I go along. But I thought it would be a fun series to show you because there's not many examples on YouTube of Photoshop artists saying, look, I don't really know what I'm doing. I want to learn. And why don't you learn alongside me? So, yeah, we, we're coming at it from a slightly different angle with this one. And I'd like to be able to show how far I've come in a year um, and hopefully some of you guys will learn this alongside with me and uh, come into the Facebook group and share your work and, and maybe uh, do this digital wave painting stuff and, and see where you can take it as well. So I've got a Cintiq but when I was using a Cintiq I thought I could actually do this with a standard graphics tablet it wouldn't be too difficult so smaller graphics tablets like the Wacom Bamboo which are a bit more affordable than the Cintiq um, would be a good option you'd still be able to do this type of work I know Clinton Lofthouse on the team uses a standard tablet and he gets on absolutely fine okay so I was doing the overpainting on the figure and then what I did there was did a stamps layer command alt shift and e that's control instead of command if you're on a pc and then using the camera raw filter just to mess about with it see if i could pick out those brush strokes so the actual overpaint isn't anywhere near finished yet i just wanted to see oh what could i do to pull out those details it may be using clarity it may be using the sharpen functions but for that one i mainly used uh, clarity and unsharp mask now i use the oil paint filter all the time and i've actually got a software issue at the moment where my graphics processor isn't being recognized so it wouldn't let me use oil paint i would actually use the oil paint filter for the hair and then manually over paint onto the image for the for the main brush strokes but it wouldn't allow me to do that so i was experimenting with hair um, I will get that fixed at some point, but it's been nice not to lean on that go-to of using oil paint filter all the time because I'm a bit guilty of doing that. So this has been a good exercise in getting away from the things that I uh, rely on quite a lot. So this is just some tinkering with the processing. I'm finding my way, doing experiments, trying to see what works, what doesn't. And then on this one for the dress, I've done a separate layer. Now, some of the observations that I've made, there was the brush, if you want to pause that, you can see exactly the brush that I used, but I'll put it in the description. A lot of this overpainting work is a case of following the lines and directions. Now, one of the things that I found is that if you push the mixer brush in a direction over a, a dark object, it can go in the wrong way, if that makes any sense and after a, a short amount of practice i found that if you go in the direction of the lines of the lights and the darks and the tones you can get a bit more of a natural look without things smudging over into each other so that was a small observation that i made so literally it's a new layer empty layer the mixer brush is set up with a preset um, a really cool preset and shout out to Pix Imperfect for getting me onto that brush set I'll make sure that's in the description below and I didn't really switch around or um, experiment with any brushes I literally took the first brush and really messed around with that okay here we are back at the mood board so I had loads of oil painting um, images portraits and referring back to that and thinking well what style of oil paint do i want to look like you'll see some basic color processing going on there um again back and forth experimentation i hide and show that thinking at the end do i want to use that color processing um but as we get toward the end of the video you'll be able to see in depth exactly what i've done there one of the issues that i had with the hair was um the original hair strands coming through you can see them there when I'm sharpening that I didn't cap capture everything 
um, that oil paint would have resolved that the oil paint filter would have resolved that immediately but it's no major drama like I said it's all learning it's all part of the process um, this one here is a new layer called hair fix it's just normal and I'm using the exact same mixer brush just to go over the hair now there's no real hacks or tips or tricks for this one um, I'd say the main hurdle is understanding how to do the strokes and learning the physics of the mixer brush exactly what it can do what it can't do what the effects are so this is phase one of my own personal experimentation another observation that I made was I think the quality of the final piece is largely dependent on the quality of the original photography so we're talking about the processing the lighting the model the subject I grabbed this one from Adobe stock and it's pretty much cheating because it already looked like an oil painting so it wasn't very difficult to take that beautiful image and push it to the next level with a mixer brush um, process over the top now this is the camera raw so I took a stamps layer command alt shift and E that copies everything and paste the layer at the top and with that I did some basic camera raw um, edits now I've done an entire video on camera raw so if you guys want to check that out it's amazing I use it all the time so there's the stamps layer at the top now this I kept in but I didn't actually use it I just wanted to show be honest with you not everything works this is fumbling around figuring figuring things out so I, I wanted to see if a high pass would do any good for sharpening but it didn't so I went to good old classic unsharp mask to see what it did with the textures um, some of the tutorials cover this kind of processing to an extent um, some of them don't but in, in my own workflow I like to see how sharpening or clarity processes change the texture and the feel of an image and especially with something very tactile like this it's got brush strokes now this is new territory for me color lookup I never used color lookup until I watched um, Abby Esparza's video the other day I don't know how recent that was another thing that I never ever used to do I never used to use curves uh, this trick um, to pull the reds out of the the blacks in the image I actually stole that um, from Clinton Lofthouse on our channel so like I said all the time I'm basically absorbing all the knowledge that's in our team good housekeeping good practice is to put your layers into layer groups so they're fast and easy to access this is a, a very fast and easy trick you create a stamped layer command alt shift and E you do a blur filter blur Gaussian blur you add a value so the whole thing's blurry and then you add a layer mask and invert that to black you can use a shortcut command and I and then with a brush set to white you repaint in those blur uh, that blur layer at the edges using a layer mask I noticed in a lot of the classic and modern oil paint portraits from my mood board that the uh, that there's an ethereal kind of floaty glow around the edges so that's what you're seeing in action there pretty cool effect I thought it worked well for this and it turned out um, not bad at all this is a little bit of a cleanup operation some errors and kind of mistakes that are spotted another observation I made is when there are um, color processing adjustment layers above the um, the mixer brush layer it, it would go wacky and like absorb weird colors so I'd always have to hide it's a good job all of that stuff was in a layer group because I could just hide that instantly and then make the edit using the mixer brush clean up that area so there you see the Gaussian blur layer above giving it those floaty ethereal edges looking back at the mood board again seeing if I'm kind of on track I always use mood boards all the time to to steal the best ideas and to mimic the looks that I want and I like to have the mood board on a layer within the layer stack um, yeah so that's pretty much it 
this is this is me figuring out how to do digital overpainting have another one coming up very soon for mixed media if you enjoyed this one guys please throw us a like subscribe even better a comment because the more good feedback we get on these types of videos the more we do so i hope you enjoyed this one take wonder it's a bit frenetic but uh thanks for tuning in guys we'll catch you at the next video and we'll see you then take it easy